Oh, that's funny. It got delivered 15 minutes after. Okay. So let me share my screen. Um, okay. Uh, you guys can see this, right? Cool. So So this is lesson two. Um, last time we just talked about some basic components, built a couple uh, sort of introductory circuits, but now we're actually gonna start uh, building something that's gonna be used in our sort of final final project. So this lesson is all about something called the 555 timer IC, which stands for integrated circuit. And uh, this is a pretty uh, cool little flexible chip that uh, we're going to use for the project and then this is kind of what we're going to use it for to generate a signal that looks like this so okay so yeah so the first part is it's, it's every lesson is kind of going to look like this right 30 minutes of uh, me talking doing a demo and then the rest of the time is you guys building it on a breadboard and getting uh, any help you need uh, so basically we're just a few things uh, I'm going to talk about the 555 timer, how we can, how we were going to use it in our project. And then if I have time, I'll take a little deeper look at the R series RC circuit, because that's a pretty sort of important part of the project. But if not, then I'll talk about it next time. And then uh, generating a square wave. So what is an integrated circuit? So if you look here to this picture on the right, this is actually what the inside of the little chip looks like. And if you, it's kind of overwhelming, right? You have like a bunch of different components in here. But basically, like an integrated circuit is just like, it's like the little black chip you can see on every circuit, but it's essentially just a collection of discrete components that's all sort of packaged into one sort of unit. So here you can see we have a bunch of transistors and resistors. Uh, I think we have a couple diodes here. But essentially, right, from our perspective, we can just look at the integrated circuit almost as like a black box, right? We don't really need to understand all the internal complexities. We, we sort of interact with it through uh, inputs and outputs, which are just like the, the pins. So like in, in software, you typically talk about like the power of abstraction, but it's also really powerful uh, in the context of circuits where you have uh, sort of layers of abstraction where you don't need to understand all the low level details. So, yeah um what's next oh okay yeah so this diagram before is not the most sort of useful to look at if you're just sort of getting started even if you're sort of more advanced this is kind of a bit overwhelming this is a more useful diagram to look at it's a block diagram that sort of shows how the how it works so yeah so the 555 timer uh so we actually use three of these in our project. That's how sort of important it is um, and flexible. And it's basically just a timer chip that we're gonna use in, in a few ways. So the first, way, the first way we're gonna use it is today, we're gonna be using it to generate a clock signal or essentially just a square wave. And then next time we're gonna use it to generate tones. And that lesson's all gonna be about um, sound synthesis. Uh, but that's next class, and that actually requires two two of these chips. But like I was saying earlier, right, we can just sort of view this chip as kind of like a black box. We don't really understand the internals that much, uh, at least for our project. Um, so this is kind of how we can just look at it, right? We just have all these pins, and we just need to interact with it with them. So this chip is pretty small; it only has eight pins. Uh, but really only four of them have significance. And when I when I say that, I mean, four of them are kind of like, they're kind of just gimmies, right? We don't really, there's not really a whole lot to them. So these first four are like the, what I call the insignificant pins. When I say that, I just, again, I mean, you know, they're kind of just gimmies. There's not too much to them. So the first is, or the first two are ground and power, right? We have, um, okay, yeah, we have a BCC, which is just the power pin eight, and then uh, we have ground, which is one, right? So you just connect those to power and ground, nothing much there. And then four and five, we actually don't really want to, we don't need to use them in our projects so and we're not going to use them. Uh, so in order to sort of disable them, we have to connect pin four, which is reset 
to high. And that's because this reset pin is what's called active low, which means if you want to reset it, you connect it to ground or lo like low. Um, and then pin five is some, some control pin that I'm not even going to talk about because we're not going to use that at all. But in order to disable it, you need to connect it through a capacitor to ground. And I'll talk a little bit about why you need to do that later, but that's also suggested in the data sheet that you use a specific capacitor to ground. So it doesn't introduce extra noise into uh, the rest of the circuit. So those are the sort of the four, I guess, trivial pins. And then the four other pins uh, are going to basically enable us to sort of control how we want this chip to work, right? Because uh, I guess something to mention is you don't just like, you know, plug this chip in and then it works and it does everything, right? It, it has some external components or we need to use some external components to sort of tune it, right? And that's because we want the behavior to be flexible, to be, you know, how we want to use it, not just, right, have like one rigid mode of execution. So, uh, yeah, so to really understand how the oh, those other four pins work, um, you know, I'm going to show an example. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Is, am I going too fast or is this good? All right, I'll say that's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so the example I'm gonna show is generating a pulse. So what a pulse is, let me actually draw on this. Um, so a pulse just, right, if you have like, that's time or and this is like voltage, a pulse just looks like this. Well, I guess it kind of just looks like this, but then it just goes back. So basically we're just like generating a, like a high voltage for a brief amount of time. So in order to generate this pulse, we need to, this, this is sort of like the simplest circuit. And I know it looks a little much, but there's really not too much going on here. So let's remember that pins one, four, eight, and five, those are the trivial pins. Those are connected how we described right before. So pin one goes to ground, right? You can see that here. Pin eight goes to sec. Uh, pin eight just goes to power. Pin four, you disable it by doing nine volts or to to high. And then this control pin, right? We disable it by connecting it a uh, capacitor to ground, right? So those four pins, right? We already took care of them. What are these next four pins? So these are actually how we control the the circuit. So the first one is pin two, it's the trigger pin. This is kind of how we say, okay, start the timer, right? So in order to start the timer, we need to connect it to ground. So I just have a little button here. And we're not actually, you're not, you guys aren't gonna be building this circuit. You're gonna be building a, a slightly different one. Cause uh, I mean, you don't have a button or a 300 kilo ohm resistor. So this is just gonna be a little demo. Um, but anyways, so pin two is just how we start the timer, right? We just if we press it down, it connects to ground and that sort of activates it. Um, uh, if you guys are curious about how like everything actually works on the inside, then the, the slide from before is a little more useful, but I'm not gonna really talk about that because it's too, too more detailed than <clears throat> more detailed than you guys need to know to understand just how this works. So that's pin two. Pin three is output, right? So pin three is where we're gonna see this waveform or this like output signal. Right, so what we're gonna, and this output is gonna be sort of close to nine volts, a little bit less. So then we just, um, this should actually be 3.30. I need to update this. Uh, but then this is basically just like the circuit we built last time, right? We have a, like around nine volts, right? Going to the LED to ground, right? That's the circuit we built last time. Um, so that's pin three. Then pin six and pin seven. So pin six is what's called the threshold pin. So the way this timer works is we have an RC circuit. So if you guys remember last time we created an RC circuit to um, sort of dim the LED, right? So like we charged up the capacitor and then the capacitor discharged and then the LED faded, right? So it's kind of a similar idea here. So we have a capacitor here, right? That's connected to ground. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna charge up through this resistor, right? And then this threshold pin, what it does is it basically just, it's connected, this node is just telling you that that's what pin six is, right? It's basically just monitoring what the voltage at the, the across the capacitor is, right? Because this side's connected to the ground. 
So this, this guy just uh, monitors what the voltage is. And once it reaches a certain point, what it's gonna do is actually cause the output to go low. So remember how I said when you press pin two, that starts the timer? So I'm actually, I'm gonna go more into detail in the next slide. Basically, you, when you press pin two, that causes the output to go high. And then basically, this guy's gonna start charging, right? That's basically the timer. Once the capacitor is fully charged, that's like the end of the timer. And then this guy monitors it and says, oh, you're fully charged. Now I'm gonna, you know, turn the timer off, right? Or reset basically. So that's what pin six is. It, it basically just says, it's basically like this, like the, it monitors the time in a sense. Um, and then pin seven is what's called the discharge pin. And that's um, basically what happens when, right? Like the pulse finishes. So basically what happens, the capacitor charges, this guy goes high. And then once six says, oh, okay, you know, you're high, like you're, you're, the capacitor is fully charged. Um, then it's going to say, okay, now you need to turn off. And then the capacitor is going to discharge through this pin. It's going to turn off. So that was kind of, I kind of drew a lot all over here, but the next slide will hopefully uh, clear this up. Okay, let me erase all this. Uh, okay, so this is kind of what I was talking about. Um, so the timeline. So, uh, so yeah, so this is the same circuit as before, right? I just added a picture in the timeline. So this at time t equals zero, right? We just, you know, we have the circuit plugged in. This capacitor here, which is like our timer basically, is discharged, right? So Vc is zero, right? This guy's equal to zero. Then when we want to start it, right, we connect pin two to ground. So now this is gonna be closed briefly not like forever so we're just going to like push it it's going to close and open right what's going to happen and that's what you can see here uh the trigger pulse so pin two goes low briefly right because we push the button uh so once we push the button pin two goes low right what happens when pin two goes low that's step two in the timeline when pin two goes low and when i say low it's one third of this this voltage but that's not really important right now but basically what happens when pin two goes low, what happens is pin seven, this discharge pin, disconnects, which means basically like there's, this guy's actually connected to ground through like a transistor. Uh, but anyways, well basically when we, when we press pin two, we want it to start, right? And we want the capacitor to charge. Right, so if this guy is connected to ground, then the capacitor is not going to charge because all the current is just going to go here, right? Nothing is going to go here because uh, this is just like a path for the current to go to. Um, so, anyways, what happens is basically pin seven disconnects, right? So then this becomes actually an open circuit, right? So no current's gonna go to pin seven. All the current's gonna go here to start charging the capacitor, right? And so also what happens when pin two goes low is that the pin three goes high, right? This is our output. So that's what that's what this is saying. So we press pin two, pin two goes low, pin three goes high and our capacitor starts charging. Is this all making sense so far? It's okay if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, someone just like typed yes in the chat or something. <laughs> okay, cool. So, okay, yeah. So that's kind of what happens when we press pin two, right? Everything starts, like the, everything sort of starts, right? So now, the timer started um, and at some later time T1, right? Which is basically this point in time, the capacitor becomes fully charged or not fully charged, it becomes two thirds of the source voltage. And once it reaches two thirds of the source voltage, this guy is saying, oh, you reach two thirds of the source voltage, you're basically fully charged. Um, now what I wanna do is actually connect this so what's going to happen is now that uh right so 
So reach two thirds of the source voltage that triggers this guy to actually uh, connect back to this guy back to ground, the, just the discharge pin, right? So what happens is now this guy starts discharging here, but also what get, happens is the output now goes low. So that all happens when once we reach the threshold voltage, right? So this guy goes low and now this guy starts discharging, right? And then that's basically what happens. This is our just our pulse. And if you want to, and the and the amount of time that this guy is high, which is T, is this T equals 1.1 RC. If you know anything about uh, RC circuits, T equals RC is the time constant. So you're probably wondering, you know, where's this 1.1 coming from? Um, and I'll talk about a little. I'll talk about that in a second. But basically. We're not charging all the way up, right? We're only charging to two thirds. So that's where this 1.1 comes from. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Or sorry, sorry, no, no, that was wrong. Ignore that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay, so that's the timeline. Let me go see what's next. Okay, a demo. So I had this circuit built. It was being a little bit finicky when I tested it this morning, so hopefully it works. Um, stop share. Okay, so this is the circuit. You can see I have the button right there. But basically what's happening is when I press the button, oh, let me turn it on. When I press the button, oh yeah, so it's being a little bit finicky. I don't know why it kind of just turned on by itself. Um, but what's supposed to happen is when I press, oh, okay, there it turned off. So when I press the button, what's gonna happen is the timer's gonna start, right? Because I connect pin two to ground. And basically this capacitor over here, is gonna start charging, right? And that's sort of like the start of the timer. Then once the capacitor reaches two thirds, then the output's gonna go, or two thirds of the source voltage and the output's gonna go low again, and the LED's gonna turn off. So the values I have here are 300K and 10 microfarad. So if you do 300,000 times 10 times 10 to negative six times 1.1, that's gonna be, I think it was like 3.3 .3 or something. So 3.3 .3 seconds is around how long this LED should turn on. Hopefully it works. I don't know, for some reason, I think like my button is faulty or something, but. One, two, three. Kind of, I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of blinked. For some reason, it's getting sort of triggered. I don't know. Okay, there, it turned off. Okay. So I don't know why this isn't working. Uh, it was being a little bit finicky in the morning. But anyways, uh, not a, not really that important because uh, we're not building this circuit anyways. Okay, so let's move on. Share my screen again. Okay, so that demo was kind of anticlimactic, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so we just generated a pulse, or at least we were supposed to. Uh, so now what we're going to do is actually we want to generate a clock signal, right? So if you look, a clock is basically just a repeating pulse, right? Because what we did before is this, right? But we want this. So we just need to repeat the pulse over and over again. So the way we're going to do that is, so you can see here, I actually, I changed this circuit in a couple different ways. But it's basically the same exact circuit. So the two changes here are first, I put a uh, 500K potentiometer here instead of the 300 ohm resistor. So we can actually toggle how long it's gonna take, right? Because if I make the resistance bigger, then that means less current's gonna flow, which means the capacitor is gonna take longer to charge, which means our timer is gonna be longer. But if I make this potentiometer smaller, then it's gonna charge faster and our timer is gonna be smaller. So that's what I meant before when I said we have these external components to, to enable us to uh, sort of toggle the behavior or tune the behavior of our uh, of this timer. Uh, so that's the first change. 
The second change is you can see here, pin, oh, kind of went off the screen, but pin two here is actually connected to pin six. So that's, I, I just said these two changes here. But basically what's going on is, remember, remember the timeline. Let me go back to the slide before. So remember when I when I connect pin two to ground, that actually triggers it to start, right? And then once pin six reaches the threshold, then it stops, right? Then it resets. So what time is it? Okay. So basically, right? So what's gonna happen is I press pin two, right? This guy's gonna start charging, right? The output's gonna go high, the LED's gonna light up. Again, this should be 330. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, that's what's going to happen. And then, right, then this guy reaches two thirds the source voltage, right? And it's going to start discharging. And so now what's going to happen is pin six is actually connected to pin two. So once pin six, so, so basically, you know, whatever the capacitor voltage is, is what's going to be at pin two, right? So once the capacitor fully discharges, it's going to be low, right? And what happens when pin two goes low? It just starts up again. So what's going to happen is it's going to, you know, it's going to charge up and it's going to go high. It's going to discharge, right? And it's going to discharge for some time, right? Until it gets to low. And in this case, low is one third Vs. High is two thirds Vs. Vs is just this, the source voltage. So nine volts, so six volts. Uh, so this guy's six volts. This guy's three volts, right? So basically, right? Uh, hopefully that makes sense, right? It basically, the capacitor charges up, right? Reaches two thirds. And so what, what happens when it reaches two thirds? It starts, it, uh, the output goes low, right? Then now the capacitor is going to start discharging, right? And the amount of time it takes to discharge is actually exactly the same. It's just 1.1 RC. And that's because, um, that's kind of why I, why I wanted to talk about the RC circuit. Uh, maybe I'll just draw it out uh, on the whiteboard. But basically, the amount, because we have the same resistance to charge and discharge, well, it's very close, right? When we're charging, it's actually 501K at the max. When we're discharging, it's just through this 500K. So it's like almost exactly the same. But just ignore this 1K for a second. If we're charging and discharging through the same exact capacitor and uh, or sorry, they're the same exact resistor, right? The amount of time it takes to get to two thirds is actually the exact exact same amount of time as it takes to discharge to one third. And this is something you'll learn in like physics or your circuit classes, if, you know, if that's what's part of your major. But that's kind of what's special about uh, this circuit. And you'll notice it's like, this is actually not like just a coincidence, right? That's the way the circuit was designed. Like 555 actually stands for um, the three five kilo ohm, uh, there's three five kilo ohm resistors in here, right? And basically if you sort of take the voltage at different points, right? You can get two thirds the, the voltage or one third the voltage, right? And so that those two thirds and one thirds actually connect to this charging and the discharging, right? Because we want, when we charge to two thirds of the voltage, the source voltage and one third of the source voltage, that's gonna take actually the same amount of time. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, the main point to get here is that basically, <clears throat> once once the, 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 we're fully charged, right? That triggers, you know, the discharge, right? And then once we're fully discharged, that causes another trigger, right? Because two goes, when two goes low, that causes it to trigger. So I kind of just, this is a lot sort of all at once. I hope it kind of makes sense. Uh, but that's that's basically it for the circuit. Um, that's what we're gonna build. So let me clear this. Uh, so yeah, so this is what the circuit looks like on a breadboard. Uh, sometimes building something on a breadboard is a little more difficult than looking at it in a schematic. Because for example, here you have like four things all going to the same node, right? But on a breadboard, that means that they all need to be on the same rail. Um, yeah.
So this is the circuit. Uh, this may not be like super helpful. So what I did is I actually just took a picture of it that I built like this morning so that you guys can just use this. If you order the components, I highly recommend you just use th these colors of the uh, the wires that I gave you. So you don't like have to like bend them in weird shapes, right? This I, I specifically chose this wire. So it exactly fits like this and these two wires and this wire so they exactly fit here. So let me actually do a demo now to show you how this works. Um, but then after that, like that's, that was pretty much it for the lecture, unless anyone has any questions. Um, actually, I have a couple minutes, maybe I'll talk about the RC circuit, but let me switch cameras again. So you guys can see this, right? So I'm just going to plug in the battery right now. And what's going to happen is this LED is actually just going to start flashing, right? Because it's like a pulse, but it's repeated, right? So you guys can see that, right? So what happens if I change the potentiometer, right, to be a higher... Uh, um, resistance right now it's slower because of the, it takes longer to charge and discharge because the resistance is higher right so that's basically what we're building today and something that's kind of cool um i don't know if you'll be able to hear this but if i let me unplug this if i instead make the output go to a speaker instead of an led you'll actually be able to hear it sort of click so let me turn the speaker on let me just plug it in here. Oh no, let me plug the battery in again. So, so I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's making a little clicking sound. So let me actually, so if I make this much faster, it's gonna click faster, right? Cause that's the rate of our pulse. I wonder if I change back to the main camera, you guys will hear it better. Can you guys hear that? Yes, no? Okay. So it's you can hear like a clicking, right? Okay, yeah. So basically, that's just the pulse going. Every time the pulse goes high, it's sort of clicking, right? Or so like going high and low, it's clicking, right? So if I actually increase the rate, it's going to sort of go faster and faster until it starts sounding kind of cool, right? So it's gonna make this kind of like weird, sort of funky, like, uh, like eh, sound, right? So uh, what we're gonna talk about next class is actually how we can combine two of these guys to make cool, cool sort of noises. Uh, and so I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna show you guys how to um, do that yet. I'm sort of gonna leave, leave that as sort of a, a cliffhanger for next time. But yeah, so let me, I'm gonna share the slides with you guys, and then you can build this circuit on your own and you're going to see the LED sort of flash and you can sort of control how fast it flashes by uh, sort of turning the potentiometer in one or the other direction. So, yeah, so that was pretty much it for the lecture. I have a little bit of time. So I kind of want to talk about the RC circuit. So I'm going to do that. Where did I put my, uh... oh, over here. okay. So let me open up the whiteboard. Okay. So the RC circuit in general just looks like this. Um, right, you have some source, 
this case it's our battery and then you have the resistor capacitor right so this is basically it you have the resistor the capacitor and so if i just connect the circuit like this what's going to happen is this capacitor is just going to charge right to vb and then that's it nothing else is going to happen because if if the voltage here and the voltage here are equal right no current's going to flow so it's just going to charge up and then it's going to stop and nothing's going to happen because current flows from high potential to low potential if you have the same potential then there's no current. No current's going to want to go from here to here. So what this looks like on a graph, 5T, VC, and we saw this picture before. What's going to happen is, let's say I connect the battery. Let's say at time T equals zero, right? This capacitor is discharged. Oh, I think someone sent me in the chat. Oh, OK. Uh, anyways, so uh, basically what's going to happen is at time t equals zero, I, let's say I connect this battery. Like let's say I have like some switch here and I connect it. So what's going to happen is this guy's at zero volts temporarily, and this guy's at you know some higher voltage. So the current's going to want to flow, right? So current's going to start flowing, right? And it's going to go, and, the, and it's actually going to look like this. This is what the this is VB. And the reason it's going to look like that is because as more charge collects in the capacitor. The voltage is going to grow and the difference in voltage is going to be less so less current is going to flow so you can see here it sort of grows fast in the beginning and then sort of dies down and this equation is actually this uh, one minus e to the negative e over rc right so it may not be super intuitive but basically what's happening is if i plug in t equals zero here right e to the e to the zero is just one right so that's Vs, or sorry, sorry, sorry. Wait, that's not right. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm dumb. E to the zero is one. <laughs> uh, so one minus one is zero. So basically Vc is gonna be zero at time zero, right? Because e, e to the zero is one, not zero. So. Now at some time later time, right? Uh, let's say time infinity, e to the negative infinity is zero. So then one minus zero is one, Vc equals Vs. So Vc equals Vs at like some time equals like, like really big, right? So as time gets goes to infinity, the, the capacitor voltage approaches, well, Vs is just Vb. But that's basically the idea, right? So in our in our in our five 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 timer circuit, this is basically what's controlling the timing, right? How long it takes to get to two thirds. So now let me explain where that one point one comes from. So we want to get to two thirds vs. So if I say uh, I want my capacitor voltage to get to two thirds vs equals right. This is the equation for the capacitor voltage here in this configuration. So these guys cancel out. I add this to the other side. Uh, one minus two thirds is one third. So I get e to the negative t over rc equals one third, right? Um, and then if I solve this, I'm gonna get uh, t is around 1.1 rc. Uh, and you can just like use a calculator. Basically that's where this 1.1 comes from. Um, because we want to charge to two thirds. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's kind of the basic idea. <clears throat> so you guys can, let me share the slides with you and you guys can just build the circuit and let me know if you have any problems. Uh, so. Let me enable sharing. Okay, let me know if you guys can uh, look at these or it says like permission denied or something.
Okay, cool. So before you guys actually build the circuit, I need to mention a few things so you don't like accidentally break something. Because I've definitely accidentally broken the circuit in the past. So a couple things. Uh, let me open up the whiteboard again. Uh, actually, I don't need to open the whiteboard. I'll open up the slides. So first thing to mention, let me go to this. So first thing to mention is the orientation of the integrated circuit. So you have to place it in the, in the certain orientation so that the pin numbers like line up correctly, right? So if you look closely here and at your circuit, you'll see there's a little notch. Based on where the notch is, that's how it looks. So this is pin one and this is pin eight. So if you go, if we go back to the other slide, you'll see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's only if right, you, you have to orient it like this where the notch is here at the left. That's the first thing to note. The second thing to note is make sure you connect ground to ground and power to power. Otherwise you can just easily destroy this chip. Um, oh, I guess another thing to mention is when you're using integrated circuits on breadboards, when they're like this, which is called like dual, I think it's called like dual inline package. You, you, place, you place it so that uh, one, one side of it is on the right side of the breadboard and the other side is on the left side. And in the middle is sort of like this little uh, like divot. So you need to place it so that the divot is in the center, right? It's sort of straddling the center of the breadboard. So that's how you place it in a circuit. And the second thing I wanna say is double, before you plug in the circuit, double check that everything is hooked up correctly. Otherwise like it might, uh, something might, right? You don't wanna damage the component cause then like I'm gonna have to send you another one, which is not fun. <laughs> so uh, just double check to make sure everything's okay. And you know, if you're worried, you can just like sort of touch the uh, touch the chip, and if it feels a little hot, just unplug it because that probably means you short circuit or something. But uh, otherwise, it should just work. And when you twist the potentiometer, it should sort of flash faster or slower. Uh, so that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna stop sharing, uh, and you guys can look at the slides and then build a circuit ac according to it. I recommend you just look at the real picture that I sent and hook it up using those wires. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I'm gonna stop recording now.